Hello, and welcome to the Voluntary Virtues Network. My name is Michael, and I'll be your host on Something is Rotten in the State of Denmark. Today, I have Lars Andersen with me yet again to talk a bit about what has happened since the last time he was on. And since he has been arrested, it was a good thing to bring up, I think. Welcome to you, Lars. Thank you very much for having me again. It, it's a pleasure, actually. So, you were arrested not so long ago for publi publishing the social security numbers from two politicians. Yes, as a part of, uh, you can call it, libertarian activism, uh, I, was, I publicized um, the social security numbers of two uh, Danish politicians, our prime minister and our minister of defense. Um, and I did that because the surveillance in Denmark is uh, very severe. Uh, the Danish government, they work with the NSA, <clears throat> the NSA and they won't really disclose how big uh, their cooperation with the NSA is, but uh, we presume that it's very big. And uh, I also publicized these uh, social security numbers because the government, on many levels, they publicize um, the social security numbers of the citizens almost um, weekly or monthly uh, by mistakes and uh, by breaches in data security and so on and so forth. So yes, I was uh, arrested um, after appear appearing on a national uh, uh, television show. Um, the police, they waited outside the studio and they, they arrested me for questioning um, on the police station in Copenhagen. Yeah, they showed up with a, a, a pretty big force, didn't they? I don't really know how many uh, police officers uh, it took to arrest me, but uh, the TV show, it's uh, broadcasted from the Danish Tivoli, uh, an amusement park in the central um, Copenhagen area. And um, I think they surrounded Tivoli with uh, at least four uh, patrol cars uh, to to get a hold of me. Um, so yes, it was not only uh, two officers that made the arrest. It was apparently uh, a multiple uh, uh, officers thing. Um, <laughs> so it, it seems quite uh, unproportional that a guy that publicizes eight digits um, has to be arrested by by four uh, police cars uh, early in the morning after appearing on national news. Yeah, it was. If you didn't want to get arrested, you'd be not there. <laughs> no, I'm I'm pretty public about everything, so I know it has consequences. And from a PR standpoint, it is very fortunate that they arrest me because it makes uh, such a good ca case against the surveillance state that they arrest uh, petty criminals uh, like me for uh, for for publicizing two social security numbers when the government itself publicizes all kinds of information about um, us as citizens. Yeah, I actually have the t-shirt on right now. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. I sold you that. <laughs> yeah, you did actually. So, uh, you, uh, right after you got arrested, the, there was a, a scandal or whatever you want to call it, where the the government actually leaked over 950,000 CPR social security numbers. Yes. And nothing happened to anyone in the government. No, uh, it, it couldn't really have been timed any better because <laughs> a few a week or so after that I uh, had been arrested, um, by mistake, the government, uh, they released, as you, as you said, almost a million social security numbers. And nobody was arrested, nobody was questioned, nobody was fired, uh, as I'm aware of. But me, little me, um, publicizing two social security numbers on the the power elite, the politicians, then it had to have consequences. <laughs> of course it did. Now, why would you not have any consequences for giving away information about your masters? That's like <laughs> yeah. It, it, it really goes to show that there are different um, laws applying to different people. Um, the, the laws applying to the politicians and to the elite in power, they are much more relaxed than uh, the laws uh, applying to us citizens. We, we can't really step, step out of our little box. The politicians can in a big way.
Yeah, if you drive around with a shotgun in your trunk, you'd get arrested for sure. But if the politician does it, it's not no problem. They can no. they can even drive so much past the speed limits that a normal citizen would get arrested and have their, their driver's license taken away at the instant. Yeah, there had has been uh, numerous occasions where politicians they got off really easy compared to to what a, a normal citizen uh, would have. Yeah, I, I, that was what I was recalling. <laughs> so, and, yeah. the, the, and even the royal, uh, the, the house of the royals or whatever it's called, they do it as well. It's just so ridiculous. Oh yes, they, they've got immunity from the yeah. law. Um, they, they cannot be prosecuted for anything, really. No, they, they could actually murder someone and there would be no consequences. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what would happen if they murdered someone, but they can do a lot of things that we wouldn't be able to get away with. So that, yeah, that is an argument for the private law society where the law is equal to everybody. Yeah, I think it's pretty, pretty dumb. R really, really dumb that people can't just... <laughs> they, that they keep defending the shit. It's just so ridiculous. Yeah, it is. It is. So, but we saw it in. I'm taking this from an article you wrote, wrote about uh, about it actually, and we saw it in 2013 with the Chinese delegation, as well, and the 2012, where where they arrested people for for showing off the Tibetan flag. Uh, in front of the Chinese. Okay. Uh, yes, um, it seems that the the Danish police force, at least in some cases, they are um, they are put in the world to protect uh, politicians and political interests. They are not um, they are not put in the world to protect the the rights of ordinary citizens, the right to protest and the the right to to. Uh, to wave a flag if some uh, Chinese uh, state employee he has a problem with it. Um, that was also a major case in Denmark, where the police just cracked down hard on anybody showing the wrong kind of flag to the Chinese government officials. Yeah, even people with uh, the flag on their shirts as well. It was just I I, yeah. I remember a bit about the incident, but nothing major. It was before I really got in, into the whole activism thing. <laughs> um, but but the, the positive thing about this is that um, the police was video recorded. So um, it was documented that they arrested and they, they did nasty things to those people whose only crime was to, to wave a flag. Um, so I think that people in some cases are waking up to to the fact that the police and the government uh, in general, they're not there to protect their rights. They actually take them away. Yeah. But I, I know you, you're you thinking a lot of the stuff through that you're doing, but did you expect to get kidnapped for leaking the social security numbers? Mm, yes and no. It didn't come as a big surprise, but I didn't really think that they would arrest me slash kidnap me right after I've been on national television. Um, and the only thing they really did was to question me. And in Denmark, you cannot be arrested for questioning. Uh, they would probably excuse themselves with uh, the fact that they needed to take my fingerprint and my photo and my DNA. Um, so they also did that. And I think that that is their justification for arresting me. Yeah, that might be the case. I, mean, I could see that. So why, why didn't you just do it anonymously? Uh, I think the effect is much, much more profound when there is a person standing, um, like, like being the tip of the spear. Um, people can identify with a person. People can't in the same way identify with an anonymous group or, or, or something like that. It's much easier to, to relate to one person doing the things that I do. Yeah, I could imagine that. Do you think that it had any effect at all? It's hard to measure any any real effect, but I think more and more people are waking up to the fact that the government is not their friend. 
Um, uh, and in in that way, I think I can help in a in a minor way to put ideas of liberty in the, in the heads of people. Yeah, I've seen a couple of people coming through to your sides just because of that incident. So to me, it seems like it had had a pretty good effect. And yeah, I, I think it has in in that way, but uh, the. The police hasn't changed their methods, or the government isn't about to being dismantled or anything. So it's uh, just tiny, uh, tiny baby steps in maybe the right direction. Yeah, true. But I've seen your articles get posted a lot of places where they normally doesn't get, where I normally don't see them get posted actually. So it's pretty good. I think it's uh, had a, a decent effect at least. Yeah, I was a lot in the mainstream media just for posting those eight digits. So I got to say a lot of libertarian stuff um, to newspapers and to television uh, stations and, and, and so on. So that's that's the big thing for me. That's just to be able to 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 convey these ideas of freedom. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I love to follow what you do. It's it's pretty amazing, and just the comments sometimes, they're just areas <laughs> on their statuses. And some people are really, really stupid, and other people just, the, the intellect in some people, it's just amazing to follow. Yeah, it is uh, sometimes amazing to, to watch the so-called sheep defending the undefendable, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. So, let's continue to the next subject. Uh, you wrote a piece not so long ago with, about the National Slag Day to support the Danish mercenaries. And I, th I found it really interesting. You wrote a couple of, of lines about you throwing away your medal. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, yes. Um, it, I might say that um, just to, to tell a little bit about my background, I'm also a former uh, soldier and have been um, deployed to Kosovo with a NATO uh, force and I wrote an article on my blog um, saying that uh, you shouldn't just support the troops just for, for the sake of supporting the troops. You should really think about what the troops are doing and it's, it's like uh, saying uh, yes you should support the stormtroopers even though you're not really agree, agreeing with uh, with Darth Vader's um, foreign policies you can't really support one thing and then disagreeing with what they do it's it has a sort of moral disconnect and um, the the western states they deploy soldiers to big parts of the world and i don't think it makes us any more safe at all, uh, quite the contrary, and um, that's that was my point of that article that had a, a lot of views uh, on the the Danish flag day, support the troops day, um, because on that day most of people they just turn off their brains and just mindlessly uh, support the troops, and if you ask them politely. Do you think that the troops are really doing a good job? They get very defensive and they tend to attack your person more than they attack your argument. And the, one of the most um, common arguments is, did you serve your country? Did You didn't even uh, go to the military uh, or you, you, wasn't, uh, you were not uh, sent out uh, to fight, blah, blah, blah. But in fact, I, I was in the NATO uh, reaction force and I was sent out to the Balkans. So that's, uh, that's quite funny to have that uh, response to those kind of arguments. Yeah, I, I actually had that one the other day. I was debating uh, whatever you could call the, what I did with uh, a soldier who was in the, the Air Force, I think he is right now. And it seemed like he was he started to cry actually because it was just oh and and he used the same arguments that what have I done to fight for freedom and stuff like that and I was I was laughing my ass off literally because I think it's more dangerous to do what I do than to sit in a plane and sit in a base somewhere and just do nothing <laughs> I'm not I'm not questioning whether the soldiers they give up a lot and or they 
some of them come home uh, maimed and uh, and mentally ill and all these kind of things. I'm not questioning that they are courageous in some ways, but I just think they are misguided and they let themselves use um, uh, being used by the government uh, for the government's purposes. Um, and they, I have a really hard time seeing that they make a positive difference in, say, Iraq or Afghanistan, where hundreds of thousands of civilian people have been killed since um, 2003. It's, it's just a massive Im- amount of people that are dead that didn't have to be dead. Yeah, and the, and the funny thing is that it was actually the CIA that created Taliban to fight against the Russians. It's oh, yeah, yeah, the government. They are meddling in all kinds of things. So the, the ones they are uh, supporting today, those people are the terrorists of tomorrow. Yeah. It's seen <laughs> over and over again. Yeah, it's the same with ISIS. They have been funded by the US as well to fight something. I can't yeah, remember what... I can't even keep up anymore. Just <laughs> stop meddling around the world. It's much better. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not, I don't have a, a taxable income, <laughs> not supporting that shit. So, yeah. when you were out in a, in Kosovo, did you ever kill someone? No, uh, it wasn't really a wartime effort down there. We made checkpoints and we made house searches, uh, warrantless house searches. So, it wasn't a, a conflict in 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 the war kind uh, of way and it was it was policing um the streets more or less and and searching people searching their homes taking away their their weapons um doing those kind of kind of things that no danish or or, or american citizen would put up with or shouldn't put up with if it happened to them if uh, armed people kick down your door just because it's a routine search. Nobody sh- should put up with that. And I don't think um, the vast majority of, of Americans or Danes would put up with um, Iraqis going, going from house to house in Denmark or the United States making routine searches. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's the same with the, the Palestine Israel country right now. So I've been hearing people saying that on both sides saying that, oh, we have to defend and do this and that and send missiles to the other side and stuff like that. And I just think, what would the same people say if it was Sweden and Denmark sending missiles over the ocean? This was like, what? Yeah, the conflict down there is just uh, one big uh, collectivist fuck up. Um, they Both sides apparently view the enemy as just one big group of people and they just they can just indiscriminately kill any one of them. That's okay. Um, yeah, it, it's a mess down there, also down there. Yeah, it's pretty crabby, actually. So, um, y- your friend got his house searched not so long ago where the police were looking for you yet again after their last arrest. And they they were searching for you for some reason, which we still don't know exactly why. Yeah, the police, they searched my friend's house. Uh, it's, he's, he's, a, he's a good friend. I just speak to him on the internet mostly. Um, but they searched his house um, and they told him they were looking for me and I hadn't been there for months. And, and we don't see each other every day. I had never slept over. Um, in his house Um, so they conducted this search with no warrant um, and they wouldn't even tell him why they were looking for me just that they were looking for me and I suspect um, that it's because that I uh, I'm selling uh, a small uh, uh, amount of cigarettes uh, at uh, below government uh, issued prices Um, it was the the police department of uh, of uh, economic uh, crime that were searching for me. So I think it has to do with me selling um, cigarettes um, at under government cartel prices. That's illegal in Denmark. You ha- you cannot make an offer on cigarettes. You have to sell them 
at a minimum price and I'm selling them below the government uh, minimum. So um, it's just, uh, I think they are suspecting me of a free trade crime. <laughs> and so it wasn't the homicide department this time. <laughs> uh, no, and funny you mention it because uh, the last couple of times where police has uh, had anything to do with me, it has been the homicide department at Copenhagen Police uh, who was conducting uh, the um, the investigation. Um, and these people, uh, their finest tasks should be to 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 solve murder cases and what are they doing they're looking uh, and prosecuting and and charging a person like me who who uh, who publicizes uh, social security numbers and sell pepper sprays to little old ladies and and, and those kind of things it it just seems like a weird um, use of resources to say it mildly yeah pretty much like and and the police in Denmark aren't actually known for solving homicides, so... Oh, I don't know. Um, most homicides get solved, but... Well, but... I, I've seen a lot of them that where they have no idea what to do, so... Yes, in some cases, yeah, but I don't think that's our, our biggest uh, problem uh, in that case. I just think that homicide police should solve homicides. They should not go after political activists like me. Peaceful activists, even. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I, I do a lot to ensure that there are no victims in the activism that I do. And you can uh, argument that that there is a victim when I publicize it, uh, the social security numbers of two politicians. Yes, maybe, but the politicians, they are doing horrendous things to us and they publicize millions of social security numbers. So I think it's a proportional response to publicize their num their uh, social security numbers just in in a kind of a peaceful retaliation. Yeah, well, uh, before you leak those two single social security numbers, they weren't that hard to find anyway. They are actually sites where they are. No, no, no. Um, the social security numbers they are. While uh, widely available on uh, government internet pages, um, and as long as you just know a person's birth date and their name, you can pretty easily find their social security number. It's just a matter of making maybe 200 guesses. Um, so it's not even hacking, it's just if you have an hour and you know a birth date and a name, you, you can find somebody's. Uh, social security number. So saying that it's a secret, it's it's just not true. Yeah, I had uh, told him on uh, not so long ago where we talked a bit about it as well. And and I learned so many things about the subject from him. It was just ridiculous. It's just too easy to do. It's very easy. And you yeah, you, you can find it any person's social security number in a matter of an hour or something. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. And how how long was you were you arrested? Uh, for th three or four hours. I was told when I was put in detention that I would be questioned uh, within the hour. But I, I I was there for three hours before um, the the murder police they questioned me. Yeah, I remember the last time I was in detention. <laughs> it took like I think it took a day or something and I was arrested for not paying a bill which oh. I had they they didn't send a notice beforehand so they just stepped up on my at my door and I was arrested straight away yeah it's sometimes they use an uh, improportional amount of force just arresting people people for for minor things and yeah, it's it's not very it's not very nice, really. Yeah, and I got I was uh, in a small town on Thun, and they took me to Onse for the, the the court there, and I didn't get to take anything with me, not no money, nothing at all. So I had I got a ticket on the way home for 
taking the train without paying for it. It was just ridiculous. Yeah, the, the government loves you. Yeah, <laughs> it sure does. So you had you have been making some progress with your online store. I really like that. I, I can't wait to see what that, that brings on. I, I simply love the concept of it with all the freedom loving things I can buy there. And yeah, I, I sell T-shirts like the ones you're wearing. Uh, the one you're wearing, uh, actually, uh, the the prime minister's social security number is is on it. You can't really see it right now, but it is. Um, yeah. Uh, Hi there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I sell uh, pamphlets telling people about their rights um, according to the law because uh, many people they just think the police um, lawfully can do just about anything to you, but they really can't. Uh, they cannot uh, frisk you without suspecting you of a crime, and and they can't uh, detain you for uh, for an extended period of time. And and I, I try to educate people about these things in my pamphlets. I used to study law, uh, and uh, me being a former police officer, that, that means that I have some some notion about what the law says on, on these matters. So I try to educate people the best I can. Well, I think you're doing a pretty good job. Uh, you, you took a, a, a donation thingy for collecting money to produce the pamphlets. Yeah, uh, I, I, I made it a crowdfunding uh, effort that was the name. <laughs> to, um, to, to fund the um, the making of uh, 30,000 uh, pamph pamphlets about uh, what we in Denmark call a t total control. Um, it's just an extended um, traffic control where the police, they cooperate with tax authorities and with uh, uh, narcotic uh, units and with all kinds of authorities. And then they close off, say, um, uh, a highway and they just... Uh, they pull over everybody and 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 really tries to figure out if they have done anything wrong, and that just um, makes hour-long queues on the highways, um, and it's just totally um, out of line if we imagine that we live in a free society that the government is making arbitrary checkpoints just to see you could be doing something wrong. And one of the police officials um, uh, speaking on this matter, uh, his argument for these controls was that if a thief or a bank robber, um, he has to use the roads to get from A to B. So if we just do this, this kind of activity as random, uh, random checkpoints, then we have to catch some of these people and with the same argument you could argue that you could just search people people's houses um, in random because at some point you you have to find somebody who's criminal and it's just it's horrific that we have come to a point where the government is doing these things to us you basically have no property rights in Denmark at all anymore it's no in a lot of ways, you don't. If you own a house, you have to pay lease to the state because uh, it's called property tax. Um, so no property rights are under attack in a big way in Denmark. Also in Denmark, as in the United States, is my impression. Yeah, and and the the property taxes are still going up and up everywhere. It's just uh, most places they are. Yes, they uh, because people they. It's a very big cost to move you and your family, and the the politicians they know that. So it's it's a very lucrative business to tax property because people they can't really just run off and and find some better place to live. Um, so yeah, they they rip people off in a big way in property taxes, and the uh, yeah you you have to pay rent to the government to to live on your own property. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it, is. it is. It is in a big way. Back to the the shop before we had to stop. Why did you make the shop? Is it just to earn some money, or do you have a deeper meaning to it? It's uh, it's also to earn money um, to to promote freedom and uh, 
and to promote uh, the, the idea of libertarian anarchy. And it's also to earn money because I, I do have to make a living somehow. So if uh, I value the, the money more than you value the T-shirt and then we made a, a trade and we are both happy. So that's just beautiful, in my opinion. Yeah, I love free trade. Yeah, it's uh, beautiful and it's, it's the foundation of peace. Um, and it really is. It's, why, you can get along with almost everybody if you just want to buy their product. <laughs> uh, yes, really. Race doesn't matter. Gender doesn't matter. Um, if you have different opinions, doesn't matter. Um, free trade is really a, a, a great thing to combat um, racism, to combat uh, hostilities between people. Because if you want something that I want, then I don't care if you... Uh, yeah, if you're I'm, black, if you're a woman, if you're a handicapped person, uh, I would trade with you anyway, probably. Um, so yeah, free trade is just uh, it's just very very beautiful. Yeah, it's it's amazing, and you have expanded to cigarettes now. That's just amazing. It's just uh, yeah, I, I sell. I have really only five uh, cartons of cigarettes. Uh, I'm selling them for bitcoins just to make the statement. Um, and the funny things about these cigarettes, I have, actually have some here. Um, is that they have actually the tax stamp from the Danish government. So they are not illegal in that way. It's just because I got them from a guy that can buy them for um, for wholesale prices. Uh, he, he owns a business here in Copenhagen. So I just got some of these and just started selling them um, almost at a loss um, just, to, just to screw with... Uh, <laughs> with people that do not like free trade. And that's just amazing. I really love that concept. It's, yeah. <laughs> but we have to stop now. Apparently that was half an hour already. Yeah, time flies. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, Lars. You're welcome. It was a pleasure, like always. Yeah. <laughs>